All right, I return. So, um, as I was talking about before, uh, figures, anti-imperialist figures, especially journalists like Blumenthal or Glenn Greenwald, um, have been lambasted by the organized left for going on Tucker Carlson's show to spread anti-imperialist propaganda, um, anti-imperialist messaging. But Tucker has the most widely viewed cable news show in the U.S., um, so why not go on his show and use that platform to spread anti-imperialist politics? Because um, if not, then he's probably going to use that time slot to like bash immigrants or something. Um, so might as well use the uh, the platforms that um, even our ideological enemies or you know ultimately supporters of capitalism like Tucker Carlson will give us. Um, and I want people to pay attention when they're watching this. Pay attention to the way Max Blumenthal predicts that Russiagate will be used against the left. Um, yes, because they're talking about Russiagate here um, and the Democrats uh, pushing of this idea that Trump was Putin's puppet um, has been going on since he won the election in 2016 over corporate Hillary. We hope you had a relaxing weekend because our political class here in Washington did not. Instead of barbecuing with their children, maybe taking some time to solve the many problems this country faces, they were back on television fretting about the Russian takeover of America. What do the Russians have politically, financially, uh, uh, or and any personally on Donald Trump that he fawns over Putin? The American people have a right to know. I do not want to see our democracy undermined by having the president of the United States colluding or, and his officials colluding with Russia. This love of Putin that this president is showing and this defense of Putin that this president has done and all of the other things that I've just alluded to uh, is unseemly. We can also say that Donald Trump Jr., um, what he did was a threat to our democracy and borderline treason. Border so keep in mind, this was 2017. So in 2014, the U.S. had successfully carried out a coup in Ukraine. Um, there was a more pro-Russian president who was put in power in Ukraine or came to power in Ukraine by election. Uh, he wanted to remove Stefan Bandera, the Ukrainian nationalist and Hitler collaborator from Ukraine's list of national heroes. Um, and previously, the Russian language had been outlawed by a nationalist president, um, even though there are many, many, many Russian speakers, especially in the eastern part of Ukraine. Um and and the the Russian language had been made illegal, but this president was going to legalize it again. That's who the U.S. overthrew. Um, Yanukovych, I believe his name was, uh, backing these um, the U.S.'s preferred neo-Nazi militias or political parties like IDAR, Azov Battalion, Right Sector, um, a very anti-Russian government because it's been the State Department and the finance capitalists and NATO's plan. For a long time to attack Russia. For a long time, their focus has been shifting towards Russia and China. You know, those are the two major threats to U.S. hegemony and U.S. power as they see it on the global stage right now. So this plan of using Ukraine as a proxy to attack Russia, you know, has been in the works for a long time. And uh, the U.S. made a very important step um, in the proxy war direction when they overthrew the Ukrainian government, which basically or started a war on the Donbass region, um, this region uh, in eastern Ukraine with many, many Russian speakers who see themselves basically as ethnic Russians, um, who then came into conflict with the conflict with the U.S. backed and armed uh, neo-Nazis. So it was... Um, the, the liberal Democrats, the State Department's plan to attack Russia, and then Trump wins election in 2016. He defeats Hillary Clinton. So after Hillary Clinton, who was part of the Obama administration, and Obama and all those establishment Democrats overthrew the Ukrainian government to do a proxy war against Russia, they want Hillary Clinton to take power in 2016 and continue to follow through, continue to threaten Russia. But Donald Trump bumbles his way into the White House. And yes, Donald Trump was an imperialist. Yes, Donald Trump was a capitalist. But Donald Trump was an outsider. Donald Trump was not a part of the ruling political class who only serves finance capital, the bankers and, and capitalist oligarchs. So the convenient thing for the Democrats to do then was Russiagate, was to not only attack Trump, but attack Russia as well. They killed two birds with one stone. You know, so they could get this outsider out of the White House, do constant propaganda about him, talk about him as a puppet of Putin, 
and also make Russia out to be um, evil interventionist, Russia and Putin, you know, meddling in others' elections, no morals. So then when Joe Biden gets elected in 2020, the war with Russia continues. The proxy war in Ukraine continues, and we've seen it escalate into, you know, now a, a horrible war that's left, you know, thousands of people dead, um, as all the U.S. expansionist efforts seem to do. Um, but yeah, Russiagate looks a little bit different now, looking back in hindsight, um, which is part of the reason why I wanted to watch this interview from 2017. Borderline treason. Well, Max Blumenthal is an author, a journalist, and a lifelong man of the left. Yet he's become skeptical of the Russian collusion narrative, which he has called destructive and dangerous. Last month, Blumenthal took a camera to an anti-Russia protest on the National Mall here in Washington to find out what the people who were there actually knew about the topic. Here's part of the conversation, an amazing conversation he had with progressive Maryland Congressman Jamie Raskin. But you said that Roger Stone hosted a show on RT. Roger Stone he hosted a series on the Russia Propaganda Network. Do, do you believe that we need Roger Stone didn't host a show on RT? You say he's never been on an RT, but he didn't host a show. Okay, well look, you, you can go after over any picayune details you want, but I don't see what, why it would be in your interest to support an autocratic authoritarian government which is jailing journalists and fighting against freedom around. The world. I think we should tell the people the truth. Max Blumenthal joins us in studio. I, that, I love that exchange because it's. Sim <laughs> That's funny how they cut to Max Blumenthal smiling at his own work. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I own that guy. These political careerists are so ridiculous. And for those who don't know, Max's dad, Sid Blumenthal, is like a friend of Hillary Clinton, Democratic establishment elite. So, and you can tell with his analysis, like he knows these people personally, or he knows sort of how the Democratic establishment works and the imperialist establishment works and, you know, who's involved and who's doing what. And he calls them out by name. Um it's very interesting, his his origin story. Similar to so many I've had on this show, where if you call into question the facts being asserted, you're immediately accused of being a handmaiden to Vladimir Putin. So just ask the broadest possible question. You're not a Trump voter or supporter. You're a lifelong man on the left, I think it's fair to say, pretty well-known one. And yet you don't think that this Russia story is helpful to the left or makes sense. Why? Yeah, I mean, we have to talk about the issue of efficacy also, in addition to the fact that I haven't seen any concrete evidence and Rachel Maddow's dots may never connect. And so... You know, as someone on the left who's actually gone out and protested Trump, I didn't expect this hysteria to completely take over, but now I see what the point is of it. I see Trump as the apotheosis of a failed political establishment, both from the Democrats and the Republicans, pushing corporate trade, pushing permanent war. And I thought the Democrats should have responded with a big narrative against permanent war and for economic equality. Instead, they're pushing Russia scandal mongering nonstop. It's subsumed all of the progressive grassroots, grassroots movements I believed in. And it's basically buried the left in a militaristic narrative that ambitious figures like Jamie Raskin are advancing. Mark my words, Tucker, when Trump is gone, this narrative, this Russia hysteria will be repurposed by the political establishment to attack the left and anyone on the left. Uh, Bernie Sanders, like politician who steps out of line on the issues of permanent war or uh, corporate free trade, things like that. Did everybody hear that? That's the main part I wanted people to see. Listen to that again. Movements I believed in, and it's basically buried the left in a militaristic narrative that ambitious figures like Jamie Raskin are advancing. Mark my words, Tucker, when Trump is gone, this narrative, this Russia hysteria will be repurposed by the political establishment to attack the left and anyone on the left. Uh, Bernie Sanders, like politician who steps out of line on the issues of permanent war or uh, corporate free trade, things like that, will be painted as Russia puppets. So this is very dangerous, and people who are progressive, who are falling into it, need to know what the long-term consequences of this cynical narrative are. It seems virtually every. And there were so many who, at least at the time, were considered on the left, like uh, Sam Cedar of the Majority Report, who we talked about earlier, TYT who just jumped on the Russiagate bandwagon because they saw it as a way to be anti-Trump, a way against Trump and the Republicans. They're bad, right? But as Max Blumenthal says here, that narrative has been completely repurposed and used to smear anybody who is against um, U.S. interventionism in Russia or who is against the U.S. actions in Ukraine or the U.S. efforts to wage a proxy war against Russia or NATO. Um, deciding in their summit that that Russia and and China um, are the the number one enemies of the U.S. State Department going forward. This is the kind of imperialist, pro-capitalist stuff that that people are using this uh, you know you're a Putin puppet accusation to justify. 
Um, this narrative that was pushed for six years by MSNBC, CNN, and, and every corner of the Democratic establishment that Trump was a puppet of Russia and that Putin wants to destroy the U.S. is now being used to wage wars for capitalist expansion and the enrichment of the military industrial complex um, and try and destroy destroy um, a sovereign nation, which Max Blumenthal saw this coming, what, six years ago? Five, six years ago, he said this, that the, the imperialist establishment is going to repurpose this, calling people puppets of Russia in favor of imperialism or and utilize it for imperialism. And what do we have now? I lost my, my TikTok account with 400,000 subscribers because people were calling me a Putin puppet. Putin, who I probably hadn't said anything good about in my life till that point. <laughs> Um, but you know, it's, it's a very, very convenient narrative, uh, for shutting down dissent, which they've been building up and working on for years because they've known they were going to attack Russia for years. Everyone on the left in Washington with some exceptions, you're one, I know a couple others, but I know people who I think it was reasonable. I don't agree with them, but who seem to really believe that Vladimir Putin was in control of the last election. Do you think they believe it? Um, I don't know. I think there's. I, I can't speak for other people. I'm not a mind reader, but there is definitely a political political class in Washington that sees Russia scandal mongering as a silver bullet to take out Trump. And then you have the Democrats who are basically the, the Democratic establishment that came in and took out Keith, Keith Ellison, the corporate sellout establishment that can't agree on a big economic message right. that doesn't favor single payer. So this is just convenient because this gives them a way of opposing Trump without having to do anything remotely progressive. It's a and that's all I thought RussiaGate was at first. Right. I didn't know it was part of this like broader imperialist strategy to attack Russia. I hadn't been paying attention to what NATO was saying um, about how they're shifting focus towards Russia and China, um, at least not this early. Uh, maybe if I was a Marxist, I would have been. Um, but basically, I just thought it was a way to attack Trump without having to talk about economics. Right. We can attack Trump over Russia and then we don't have to attack him over what he's actually doing or how he's not helping the working class. And, um, which it was that, but it was also part of this broader imperialist strategy. And someone said earlier, this is the same thing as Hillary's emails. It really is. That's such a good, uh, um, that's such a good comparison because the Republicans would be like, oh, Hillary doesn't know how to work an email. You know, she allowed her, or her leaked emails got Americans killed. She sucks. And they're talking about Benghazi and Libya. And when Hillary oversaw personally the NATO intervention in Libya, which threw the country into a total disaster, brought it from, you know, one of the highest, if not the highest standard of living in Africa per person under Gaddafi, um, and took it to a country destroyed uh, by civil war, um, violence everywhere. Um, poverty came back to came back to Libya. There was an open air slave market because they essentially were left with no central government. The U.S. essentially had no plan other than overthrow Gaddafi. The U.S. and Hillary Clinton had no plan. Other than that, so they just you know overthrew him and then left the country in a terrible power vacuum, um, which cost U.S. taxpayers millions and millions and millions of dollars. And they lied and lied and lied and lied about it every step of the way. And then Republicans are like, "Oh, you know, Hillary doesn't know how to work an email server. That's what she did wrong in Benghazi and Libya. Like, what about destroying the whole country with your tax dollars?" What about trying to keep the whole world in, in poverty so she can enslave them? Is that not something to criticize her for? You know, that, that's more worthy of criticism than the emails. Um, so Russiagate and Hillary's emails, the two uh, dumbest arguments to come out of the American political establishment in years. But two arguments that make sense if you understand the broader context of imperialism. The Republicans were probably just mad at Hillary's emails for leaking because it exposed all their war crimes. It's a little bit surprising from a perspective of someone in the media to see big news organizations full of smart people who I thought were pretty skeptical in a good way refuse to ask any of the basic questions and instead when you press them say, well, some number of intelligence agencies said so. I haven't seen the evidence, but I believe them. When did that change? What is that about? Yeah, I mean, you just you see a, a bootlicking press and a bootlicking kind of liberal opposition that believes all intelligence agencies and doesn't ask questions from these anonymous officials. I mean, you'll see on CNN a segment, U.S. officials say Russian, Russian spying is ramping up. I don't know, are Russian spies taking Adderall now? But there's never any clear sourcing 
uh, never any sources on the record, and then we see stories retracted, like that the Russians hacked into our national electricity grid. Then the Washington Post said it was Burlington, it was uh, Burlington, Vermont's electricity grid. Then they retracted the story. So it's very hard to keep track of it, but what they've done with this scandal mongering, in addition to kind of pushing away a progressive narrative, is create the sense among a lot of people who don't have time to pay attention that there is Russian collusion, that we were attacked by Russia, and that we actually have to respond, if not with expanded sanctions, which I think is very dangerous and harms average people, uh, but with a military response. We just saw Paul Begala on CNN calling for blowing up the Russian intelligence. And you've seen members of Congress call this an act of war. Finally, you're a pretty, not just a member of the West, but pretty fairly well known. What kind of response have you received after saying things like this, this in public? Well, I'll probably get called a Putin puppet after this show. I mean, that's pretty much all they can say, but I'd like to have a debate about the evidence. Um, I would like to talk about the evidence behind this, but I also want to talk about whether it's a good idea to support Democrats like Ben Cardin, who are saying that this is a political Pearl Harbor and we should respond, whether it's a good idea to expand NATO into little countries like Montenegro, whether it's a good idea exactly. to be funding uh, jihadist proxies in Syria to hurt Russia, Thomas Friedman in the New York Times called for supporting territorial ISIS in Syria to hurt Russia and Iran. And that's where this narrative is leading. It seems to be, from a purely progressive, anti-war, anti-imperial position, a disastrous narrative that will have long-term consequences for the left in this country. And there's no debate. So my son will be required to give his life to defend the territorial integrity of Montenegro? Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe we should debate it, but we're not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Next balloon call. That was... He was right about everything. He called it. He went on Tucker Carlson's show and called it. And and like Nam Trin says here, yeah, and, and people are going to be like, why would you go on Tucker's show? That means you're a right winger. Because he's going on the largest, largest cable news show in the country and telling people truthfully that Russiagate is BS and that Russiagate is going to be used to push for imperialism. And exactly what he predicted in this video uh, has been what's played out. Um, Russia has been used, the Russiagate narrative has been repurposed and used to not only justify imperialism in this endless proxy war in Ukraine, um, but also to silence anybody who dissents and anybody who criticizes the U.S. or NATO's actions um, in leading to this conflict and creating this deadly, disastrous war that's going on in Ukraine. And the one last thing I like is that he brings up how the, the Democratic establishment and the Democratic media in their articles, they'll just quote the intelligence agency as if it's facts. You know, that means like the CIA and the FBI, the people who did Operation Condor and filtered Nazis into positions of power within the U.S. government um, and U.S. oligarchy. And the people who have been censoring our media and censoring academia and carrying out violent, deadly coups in foreign countries for years. And Democrats now just trust these people. Well, the intelligence community told us this. Uh, it has something bad about Trump in here, so it's got to be true. You know, let's just believe everything the CIA says. They'll literally be like, the intelligence community has determined... Like, they'll just call it the intelligence community because that sounds a little better. Like, oh, you mean the murderous imperialist armed bodies of the state that are the FBI and the CIA? Gotcha. I'll, I'll be sure to believe those guys. They have a great track record. Um, it's kind of crazy. There was one. Oh, yeah. And then even when Trump was president, they'd be like, you know, Trump is a disgrace because he's going against the intelligence community. Like, that's not what makes him a disgrace. Him putting sanctions back on Cuba, uh, the embargo back on Cuba after Obama had repealed it only because he was pressured publicly by the Pope, who called him out for murderously strangling a small island country off the U.S.'s southern border. Um, but Trump put it back on because he was pressured by right-wing Miami Cubans, um, a.k.a. Gusanos. Um, and then... You know, I'm, I'm saying that's the kind of murderous stuff he's done, the imperialist stuff he's done, not going against the intelligence community, not going against the CIA. That's a good thing. That's what JFK did that got him murdered, if we're being honest.